Guys, I want you to look at this great movie made in the mid 70s, Robin and Mary, right? It shows you the huge mistake men make chasing status. This is a proper, what is that word they're always using? Not a breakdown, uh, a subversion, right? Robin sacrifices everything to chase status and it ends up being his undoing. Now, this isn't like the Beowulf in the early 2000s, right? Which assassinated his character. The Beowulf character here was turned out to be greedy and selfish and lustful and, and a liar, right? He made up his stories, right? So this was an assassination of the Beowulf character. This isn't so. This is a, a moral story. This is what happens when you put your life around chasing status, okay? Now, this is years after the original events, right, where he fought the evil Prince John to follow the true king, King Richard, right? Well, it turns out King Richard is just as much of a bastard as Prince John ever was, right? So let's, he's supposed to storm this castle, which has nothing but children in it. See anything? You think it's deserted? If they've gone off with a treasure, Richard isn't going to be pleased. If there ever was a treasure. One more flight. I speak for Richard Lionheart, King of England, Lord of half of France, and thereby overlord of this domain. I'm up here speaking for myself. Where are your soldiers? Ran off. And the Lord of Chalouse, where is he? He led him. Ask him if he knows about the treasure. Left me here with all the women and children and no weapons any place. Here am I with only half an eye collecting arrows. And you think I've got a bow to shoot him with? <laughs> there they are there's there's the villains right a bunch of kids <laughs> you know this think of the embarrassing you know embarrassing situation king richard is going around hunting for treasure he's the lord of half of france and what's he doing he's just wasting his life away trying to gain more wealth right Instead of just being in France. He's king of England, but he's in France. He didn't even like his own country. Right? Now, we'll show you who King Richard really is. Here's the hero that Robin and Little John here been laying down their lives on for, for 20 years. What kind of siege is this? Where is the Lord of Chalus and where is my treasure? Gone. My treasure, gone. And the Lord is gone. Your treasure never was. A gold statue, three foot long, I want it. Captain? Yes, my lord. I ordered you to take this castle. Yes, my lord. Well, take it. Bring it down and get my statue. They surrender, and your statue is a rock. I want it done. There is no treasure. Do it. There are no soldiers in there, just some children and the mad old man. And what is that to me? And it should mean something. He's holding this king to standards, right? Is that disapproval, Robin? Am I in the wrong? See, he's, and he's like, it doesn't matter if I'm an evil monster. I'm the king, that's all that matters. I followed you for 20 years. I fought for you in the Crusades. I fought for you here in France. Show me a soldier and I'll fight him now. But I won't slaughter children for a piece of gold that never was. I ordered it. 
I command you. You do it! You're a bloody bastard. You'll enjoy it. Damn right, I'll do it. Okay. There you go. That's what he's been wasting his entire adult life on. <laughs> Arrest those two, lock them up, I'll have their heads on pikes! I want these walls down and I want every damn head in the place! Don Hart! Don Hart! You are a pig! I love it. Good God. Oh, it looks good on you, just bad. Yep, murdering children, women, an old man, the whole works. Burning the place down. There's no treasure, right? <laughs> There's no treasure. There they are. There's his treasure, that stone right there, it turned out. <laughs> I could have talked to Richard. I could have tried. But she has a bloody bastard. Are we any better? We serve him. He's our king. I took him for a great king. There we were in Sherwood, robbing abbots, giving pennies to the poor. Didn't see much compared to rescuing the Holy Land. How can you... But it was actually the better time of his life, right? Because he stood up for something when he was fighting for the peasants in Sherwood. And here he's just following a grubby, greedy piece of crap. Eat. I'm hungry. I reckon it's a good life to have reached 40. We are both past it. Look at us. Oh, my poor old dad and all the dads before them lived in Barnsdale. All they ever knew was one small town. I've known a king. See, that's what it is, eh? All my, all the, my father and all the fathers before him, they were nobodies, and I got to know a king. And yet here you are. 20 years later, in a dungeon, going to be beheaded by a man that you thought was such a good person. <laughs> this is so typical of men. Okay. Well, going to get into the good parts, okay? The parts that's important for this video. So I'll just skim by this, but this is good. What now? We watched him die. He saw us there. He won't mind if we miss the funeral. Where do we go? Which way? North. Why north? England's there. Let's go home, John. Yeah, let's go home, dude. Home meant nothing to me. When I had all this ideas, I was going to go out and, and become someone important. Now, the status change chase, sorry, is over. Let's go home and, and let's think about home for a change. Twenty years later, serving the king, and all they got is the clothes on their backs. I love the peasants. Almost don't give a shit. Just two guys riding by. Don't give a shit about them. 
You know why? Because rulers don't mean anything to them. They don't do anything for them. The rulers are just leeches. <laughs> Denies home, he wants to do what? Look for his glory days, right? I know these woods. Good place to pass the night. We're going through. What's that? Deer. Deer. <laughs> Somebody seen us. Hmm? Well, those were sorry, guys. I should put it a little further ahead. Those are just his his band of merry men, right? Notice two of these guys don't plan for the future. He said, oh, God, "We're lucky to be past forty, right?" So then, people, men in those days, just didn't think. Of, of being old and what are you going to do in their old age? I can see it. I can't even see you. That's the top of my tree. I told you this is the way. What? That's nothing left. What would you expect to find? I don't know. I never thought this. Yeah, that's it. It's just a rundown piece of glade now, right? But they return home and they've got all these fond memories of what went on there. Because important things did happen to them. Important things to their lives, right? Remember the good old day? Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. Anyway, I'll zip it. I won't, I won't spoil anything. I want to catch this part here. Of the Will, song. you didn't make it up. These songs, I don't know where they come from, but, but you hear them everywhere. Now, we go from town to town. And the town. Well, what do you do for a living? Well, I take confessions. He takes the horses. <laughs> And everywhere we go, they want to hear about the things you did. We didn't do them. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> I think I'll go to Barnsdale in the morning, see my dad. He died, John, years ago. Yeah, John, now that you stopped chasing status and there's nothing left for you, now let's think about family. Oh, but your family's gone, dude. You could have spent your life with them and, and had meaningful experiences with them. But no, you were, you were running around with the king and trying to collect gold. And now dad's dead, right? And I'm so shocked. What's the odds of an old man dying? You know? <laughs> I think I'll think about him now. This is so typical of today, right? And I want to point out just how much the sheriff of Nottingham has changed, right? Again, this is very subversive. Here they show him as a kick-ass warrior who might have been you know, desperate to get at uh, Robin in the past. He's changed. He's, he's, he just wants to get by and live life, right? That's, you, you'll see that. It's like he actually respects Robin Hood. And he doesn't want things to go back to the past. Right. Any questions? <laughs> anyway, we'll get further ahead. There's Maid Mary and everyone. She became a nun. Why? Because when Robin of Loxley ran off, there was no man high status enough to glom onto. She said, I'd rather become a nun than shack up with some peasant loser. Hey, that has nothing to do with the modern era, does it? <laughs> this is an interesting talk, too. Living in the world again, or even for a minute wanting to. Come morning, I'm going to the sheriff. What's the sense? Who would it serve? 
There's always God. You went crusading, didn't you? Well, there's some things worth dying for. They had souls, too, the heathen that you killed. If I should die in prison, I'd rather not. But if it comes, it's for a reason. I'll have stood for something, but I won't have taken another life to do it. Very nice. Of course, such a woman doesn't exist, right? We all know that. A woman of principles doesn't exist, sadly. But this is a fantasy. We can go with that. But the point is, she pointed out something true. Like, she wants purpose in her life. She wants to stand for something. And she's not willing to sacrifice another person. By the way, what's happening, guys, if you watch the movie, is that the current king uh, has outlawed, like, a particular, whatever the particular religion was. I don't know if it's Catholics or Protestants or whatever. I don't know my history very well. But, of course, so they're jailing all the nuns and, and monks, right? So that's why she, she's being arrested, right? And they're having this conversation. But anyway, the point is, is here she's putting on a face or a mirror to a status chasing. So here, I'm standing for something where you just make the world better. What'd you do? You joined the crusade so you could get rich and famous. Robin again describes what a bastard King Richard was. And he also shines a light on the clergy at the time, right? Which she's a part of. Now, fight the sheriff. More corpses. Aren't you sick of it? On the 12th of July, 1191, the mighty fortress of Bajaka fell to Richard. His one great victory in the Holy Land. He was sick in bed, never struck a blow. On the 20th of August, John and I were standing on the plain outside of the city, watching while every month King Richard spared the richest for ransoming, took the strong for slaves, and he took the children, all the children, and had them chopped apart. When that was done, he had the mothers killed. When they were all dead, 3,000 bodies on the plain, had them all opened up so their guts could be explored for gold and precious stones. Our churchmen on the scene, and there were many, took it for a triumph. Yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah, that's what you're a part of, lady, right? Took it for a tri triumph. This is, this is just massacre for wealth. That's it. Panning for gold. Think how desperate King Richard was to find riches. They start cutting up bodies to look for <laughs> treasure that wasn't there. That's his whole existence, his whole experience in this movie, right? King Richard panning for gold, right? Oh, this is important because she asked, why didn't he come home, right? And he took the children, all oh, the children. Sorry. Played this. Took it for a triumph. One bishop put on his mitre and led us all in prayer. You ask me if I'm sick of it. Why didn't you come home then? He was my king. He's my king. No. Why didn't he come home then? Because if I came home, I'd be nobody. Right? My glory days were in the past. If I came home, I'd just be another old farmer like the rest of you. No, thank you. That's why he didn't have anything to answer with. He was my king, right? But the king that you ex just explained was a baby murderer, that guy. <laughs> I'm going to show you how much 
the sheriff of Nottingham respects Robin of Loxley. They've set a trap for him. They're just trying to capture him. The boys are going to try and get away. He could have them shot down with arrows, and he doesn't. Look. <laughs> you guys are too old for them. Get them out here. <laughs> That's what I mean. Where's your crossbowman? You've got them. Because he doesn't want to shoot this guy down like a dog. This heroic man. All right. This is a, a very good uh fight scene, but you can watch that. Okay, I'll put it in the description box. And they're going to now talk about the things he actually gave up to go to a foreign country and murder people for the king. Right? Why did I ever leave? Uh, let's take a look at you. Oh, just a few bumps, all the bruises. Same. They're all the same. Oh. So many. You had the sweetest body when you left. Hard and not a mark. And you were mine. Yeah, that's this kind of reminds me of MMA fighters. Like, I, I, I used to think when I was younger, I'd, it'd be great if I get into boxing or something. Now I'm glad I never did. Because all you do is sacrifice your body. You know, she said, no, you were perfect physical health. And you had the a gorgeous woman. We are all, you know, she was gaga over you, right? She left that all behind because if you stayed, you would have been a nobody. That's what's important. To be a somebody. Throw away everything for it, Right. When you left, I thought I'd die. I even tried. I woke up in the woods not far from camp. And... Well, we don't need to hear this. All right, her man's back. Maybe can finally stop being a nun and be a housewife, leech. I can't stop smiling. I don't mind. Could there be two rooms to our house next time? Hmm. And something for a floor. All right. I'd like that. And a bed. See, she's dreaming about a house, dude. And this guy she can't figure it out. He's saying, hey, remember the glory days when we slept in the woods under the rain? <laughs> With blankets? And a chest for clothes and... <laughs> so typical. <laughs> this is why you got to stop guys from saying, hey, have you ever talked to a girl? Robin Hood here never talked to a girl, apparently. Because he thinks women are like him, that they live for glory. No, they live for safety and comfort. And he's going to throw this away. This is his chance. He could just say, I'm not going to fight the sheriff of Nottingham. I'll go and, and just marry this woman and, and we'll actually start making our own lives. So even in his old age, after all that he went through, he's not going to take this. I'm sorry, spoiler. This loser is not going to take that. He's going to give it all away for glory. Just to reinforce this, these older guys are telling him, don't fight the sheriff, right? Nothing. Nothing. You're going, aren't you? It's a possibility. You've heard John. And Will and Tuck, they all said it was madness. Well... 
Is that all being dead means? Well? I'll have a lot more to say when the time comes. Well, let it be God's time. He'll take you soon enough. And it's all in his hands. You think I'm old. Grey and old. Well, I'm not. There you go, guys. In a nutshell. Yep, midlife crisis for Robin Hood. <laughs> you think I'm getting old, lady? But you are getting old, dude. He is getting old. And he's got he doesn't want to hang it up. He's willing to throw it all, all away. Just for this, for for the good old glory days. So these peasants that were merely grumbling, what's he do? Get them all riled up. Then they get the uh, king on them and the noblemen who want to quash him, right? So he's sacrificing these people he used to protect to do what? Live his, relive his glory days. Now here he is, he's going to fight with the sheriff. And guess what? The sheriff doesn't even want to do it. I knew you'd come. Of all men. Just for you. I know. I want to settle this with champions. One of your men against mine? The winner takes the day. Why should I, Robin? The odds are four to one. Why should I make them even? I'm one champion. Ah. Uh, and I'm the other. <laughs> Look at this. Robin's so happy over this. And the sheriff of Nottingham is like, do we have to go through this? Like he, he, oh my God, he's the wiser man. If I lose, my men are yours. Without me, they won't trouble you. They'll go home again. And if I lose? Your soldiers leave the field. Those are my orders, they clear? I let this rabble go, just march away. Those are my orders. See, he's doing it again, guys. He could have shot Robin and little John earlier. Just shot them when they were climbing that wall, scaling that wall. But he's a man of honor. Here he is. He's going to like, okay, frenemies, let's get this over with. Leave the field. I promised I'd watch out for you. I promised her. She's gone. In any case. I'll kill him, Rob, if you don't. No. What you do is keep my word. See you, Johnny. Off you go. Yeah, helps them up. Yeah. <laughs> God be with us, Robin. Now, I'm not quite sure how much of this I can play and not get copyright exactly. So. Okay, guys, sorry. Uh, I'm not going to ruin this for you. <laughs> Go and watch this. This is a great fight scene. And I won't ruin the ending either. Because I made my point. In the end, it's tragedy. Right? How it ends up that way is, uh, you know, I'm not going to spoil. But the point is, this whole movie is about Robin Hood giving up everything that he, he could have gone home, restarted, got together with Maid Marian and just had a good life in his old age. 
It's no good. There's no glory in it, right? He didn't want to be a nobody. So here he is fighting for his life in the field of hay. <laughs> and so, like I said, these kind of films aren't made today. These are the kinds of films that are made. Like they remake he ancient heroes like Beowulf and spit on his character. Make him into a greedy uh, <laughs> liar. For, you know, these uh, modern films, and this is fairly modern, I think it's 2007. The last 20 years have been, or at least 15, destroying the, the, the male heroes. But here, it really does have a point. It has a fantastic message. And this is one of these great films that people don't even realize exist, let alone don't remember. Anyway, it's important to me to show to you. I'm going to put it in the description box and you guys can watch it.